Hello everyone, a uh, pleasant day to all of you. This presentation is titled The Role of Government in Tourism. This uh, lesson is part of the tourism industry sectors and their roles. If I may recap the uh, previous lesson, we talk about the private sector made up of uh, the different businesses that are directly related to tourism such as the hospitality that has lodging and food and beverage industries. Then we also talked about the transportation industry wherein we identify the different modes of uh, movement or transportation, namely the air. Then we also have land. We also have water. And we also talked about the rail system or the rail transportation that uh, helps people to move from their point of origin to their point of destination. And I have said in the last slide that we will have a separate presentation for the tourism products because it's a lot and it needs another um, time for it to be talked about separately. Now, uh, moving on to our topic, we will be focusing on the role of the government in tourism. So to start, why governments are involved in tourism? First, tourism has an impact on the economy of a country. Uh, when we say impact on the economy of a country, let me remind you about the uh, lesson that we had previously talking on the benefits, the economic benefits of tourism to a country, wherein we already have discussed that uh, it brings foreign currency, uh, tourism impacts on the balance of payments, it provides employment, and uh, because uh, it provides employment, then people are capable of you know, paying taxes, as well as the businesses that directly benefits from tourism, that those taxes are in the form of uh, income or those taxes becomes the income of the government and with this income the government has the money to spend to aid in its regional development another reason why government is involved in tourism it's because tourism involves movement across national frontiers. What is movement across national frontiers? That is, imagine a tourist coming from another country and that tourist would sometimes need an entry pass to a country in a form of a visa. And um, not all tourists are allowed to enter a certain country. There are some requirements for every destination to qualify the people that they would like to, uh, that they will allow to enter into their country. And so it is the government who control and monitor this activity. Now, if I may add, the control is done by issuing visa, by also screening people once they reach the destination if they have the proper documents in order for them to enter a certain country. That's why when we landed into our country of destination, we are subjected to an immigration uh, screening or immigration procedure. Moving on to the third involvement of the government, tourism is often used to enhance national image. Every destination would like to have a positive image or would like to have a good impression uh, from the eyes of every maybe visitors or tourists that visit the country or those who would like to visit their country. So governments are keen to ensure that foreigners have a positive perception of their country. In that case, they do all possible things to make the country project a positive image from the infrastructure that they built 
to the people, to the attraction they see to eat, that everything uh, pleases the tourist to convince them to come back and maybe expecting, or not maybe, but expecting people to spread um, a positive impression about their country. Now, let's continue by looking at the other involvements of the government, involvement of the government. The tourism product may need protection. Why does it need protection? Some businesses are spending a lot of time, money, and other resources to develop a product. And in that way, once the product has been perfected and uh, now ready for the market, sometimes those who are uh, those other businesses that practices unfair business would usually copy the existing product. And so the government may act upon this businesses who are copying product and so it's the government who is in charge of uh, probably issuing the patent to the original creator of the product and also aside from giving protection to products manufactured in their country it's also the role of the government to help in the development of this product some products are very promising. However, they need more funds to be perfect or to be perfected. And um, if the government will benefit from the businesses through their taxes paid, government also is responsible for helping in the development of these products through government Aid. And um, in addition, many core tourist attractions are public property. We have learned about this when we first talked about the tourism industry and the different sectors involved. We said that tourism has both private and public sector and that most of the businesses are in the private sector and so they make money by engaging in their own activity. On the other hand, there's also the public sector who is risk, who does not make money but usually supports businesses in whatever way they need. Now, I also did mention that some of the infrastructure or some of the tourism products are owned by the government. And so some tourist attractions are public property. Let's say such, for instance, some landscapes or what we call a mountain is an example of a landscape. Natural and built heritage such as monuments, or maybe castles, or temples, or museums. So government protects and helps develop the product, and the government is also in charge of its public property that are tourist attractions. Moving on to the next involvement of the government is the government provides or has an interest in the infrastructure. Uh, when we say infrastructure, these are the different facilities that encourages people to visit the destination, such as uh, roads, railways, airports, and, uh, and public services such as tourist assistance. Okay, so uh, although we have to remember that uh, very little infrastructures are provided solely for, for tourism, 
when the government or when government develops an infrastructure first thing that they have in mind is their local people now the local people benefits from it and the benefit is also extended to some tourists um, let me just give you a uh, the proper mindset that the development of infrastructure is not really focused on the tourist they are the second beneficiary but most of the infrastructures developed by the government is usually first for its local people or citizen okay let's continue the industry is very diverse and the government involvement is necessary to regulate coordinate activities and provide consumer protection first of all let's focus on what do they regulate as I previously mentioned they regulate the entry of people to their own country they regulate what products can be brought in their country they also coordinate activities like for example um, when they set up or when they uh, hosted the Pyeongchang Olympics this uh, event has to be coordinated to the participants coming from different countries and um, not only to the participants but well as to the other businesses that will support the event such as the accommodation the food and beverage and the other uh, food and beverage sector and the other things needed by the tourist to uh, when they visit or when they participate on that event and I have previously said also that they provide consumer protection so uh, consumer protection is both for the local consumer and for the tourist consumers protection in a sense that say for example you bought a product which is uh, which uh, you found out does not uh, perform to its promise then you can definitely return the product or refund it now uh, the business where you bought the product doesn't have the right to reject the refund or maybe the exchange because the government protects uh, the businesses but it also protects consumers and um, uh, next provide financial support necessary for marketing and development of the de destination financial support does not come free it's actually come in a form of a loan that they give to people like small medium enterprises who would like to set up or to start business under tourism so uh, uh, this financial support uh, helps people to really be part of this tourism uh, business activity and then last thing and the most important is uh, many governments use tourism uh, tax as a source of their country revenue so again we have already talked about this that uh, people are employed businesses are making money from the uh, salaries of people and at the same time the profit of the business they turn into the government their contribution by giving them uh, or by paying their taxes and so that's why uh, the government is involved in tourism so if you have questions regarding this we can talk about those questions when we see each other during our online class so to review the major roles of government in the development of tourism 
previously, uh, the slides or the important points that we talked about focus on an ongoing tourism activity. Now, in order for the country to sustain its business, or not only to sustain, but to further expand the business, the government is also involved in the development of tourism. So what are the major roles of the government in the development of tourism? First, the government is involved in the planning and facilitating of tourism. We have learned the facilitating and the man managing of tourism from the previous slide. But the planning is planning uh, can be an example of a local tourist destination plan. It can be uh, planning for an opening of a new land area that will be converted into a tourist destination like they do have a very good nature such as mountain and they realize that this mountain can be shared with other people and so before it can become available they have to make sure that this mountain has the necessary probably facilities like for example bathroom um, not, not a toilet or maybe uh, eating places or maybe rest area and so they need to plan prior to uh, allowing people to visit this mountain. So that planning is usually taken, uh, not usually, but is taken care of by the government because it's a uh, public property. And um, another example of planning would be like the event that uh, was held here in Korea, the Pyeongchang Olympics. So. The Pyeongchang Olympics, which was held in, uh, in Gangwon-do, is directly, um, I would say, uh, conceptualized or the lead uh, organization in the uh, planning of that event is the government. And so even before the event uh, came, it took years for them, I think more than five years for them to prepare and of course before that preparation they did plan on how to prepare and how they will uh, run the event so that's another example of planning done by the government in the development of a tourism why did they hosted the Pyeongchang Olympics you might ask they hosted first of all because they would like to have, uh, they would like to show uh, the a national image by, you know, by um, giving the, the tourists the opportunity to see, oh, oh, this is the Kangwon province. Because when we talk about Korea, people knows that Korea is Seoul and they are not knowledgeable of the other beautiful uh, places of Korea and so this Pyeongchang Olympics is an opportunity for for Korea to showcase what that place or what that province can offer and uh, yeah that's why we said that planning is uh, is uh, spearheaded by the government and the facilitation Again, we have mentioned, like for example, uh, the issuing of the visa, the screening of tourists coming into the country, and also uh, maybe regulating, like for example, the tourist arrival. Uh, regulating in a sense, like for example, what we have right now is a pandemic. And uh, since the government prioritizes the health, and safety of its local people, they try to facilitate the arrival of people here in Korea. Okay, let's move on to the second, which is the control and supervision of tourism. 
uh, control and supervision of tourism, like first issue that we have here is the refusal or granting of permission in planning. Uh, in a country, there are places that we call protected areas. And when we say protected areas, no matter how we need a place for tourism, if it's a protected area, then the government would refuse, of course, to, 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 to work on a plan for that place. But if in case that area can be developed as a tourism destination, then it's also the government that grants the permission in the planning of the destination. Uh, another point under control and supervision is the control of the export currency. When we say export currency, we're talking about won. Okay, so some people uh, would like to bring home a souvenir, and that souvenir sometimes would be the currency of the country that they visited. They can do so, but there is a limit. And so um, there is a limit of bringing currency. I'm not sure how much is the limit of Korea, but every country has their own limit of exporting a currency. Okay, so maybe if you are curious enough, right after listening to this presentation, you can check how much is the limit of that export currency or that won currency when it's being brought outside Korea. And then of course, very obvious uh, role is the supervision of the tourism industry. Uh, talking about supervision, there is a government body that directly supervise uh, tourism. And um, in case of Korea, you have the Ministry of, uh, I think, Culture, Sports, and Tourism that uh, that directly supervise this industry. When we say supervise, they're there to hear out whatever issues, whatever opportunities that might be available within the industry. Okay? So, um, we still have more to talk about regarding the role. The third is direct ownership of the components of the tourism industry. So I'm just repeating myself when we say direct ownership of a component. Uh, we have previously talked about that the transportation of Korea is owned by the government, like the buses or uh, uh, the, the railway system. They owned it. And most of uh, public attractions, most of the attractions, such as museum, maybe parks, they have a direct ownership to that. And so if they own it, they have to supervise, they have to manage, and they have to plan for the sustainability of those, uh, those destinations. Okay? And the fourth is the promoting, uh, promoting tourism to domestic home and overseas market. We learned again before that we have two different kinds of tourists in terms of where they are coming from. Or in th yeah, we have the domestic tourists who are tourists that are visiting their own country and we have tourists who are coming from overseas and we call them foreign tourists or we call them international tourists. And so uh, for the business to be known, for it to uh, create an awareness to people who don't know it yet, or maybe, yeah, to people who don't know it yet, they have to promote the tourism, both the domestic and overseas market. And when we say promoting tourism to the domestic and overseas market, they usually have an active involvement. 
when we say active involvement, they participate in maybe conventions, in marketing promotions, or in coming up uh, with marketing programs that are uh, addressed to both domestic and overseas tourism. So uh, they try to find out what kind of uh, what kind of destination uh, that will appeal to tourists. Uh, looking from the other side, they also try to find out what kind of tourists are visiting their place so that they can come up with products or maybe services that would appeal to both domestic and overseas market. And again, we have said previously, they provide uh, government aid or what we call investment support to people who would like to be part of this industry and um, uh, not only to businesses, but it also they invest on the marketing of their destination. If you will go to YouTube and if you will browse about Korea, you will see that most of the videos or films uploaded there is created by the Ministry of Tourism or it's created by a designated organization to, uh, to come up with a promotional campaign for tourism. So, uh, and that's not done free. So you should invest in that. And um, once you, of course, upload it in social media, then you have to pay for, for, the, for the space that it occupies. Like, for example, if, uh, if they have to advertise it in Facebook, they have, to pay, they have to pay Facebook for it to be shown. Okay? And when we say operational support, operational support would mean the ongoing activity of the business like for example if we would look at the uh, tourist movement so we start uh, the operations by welcoming this tourist and uh, we imagine or let's imagine a foreign tourist or a tourist coming from the outside of the country so um what happens or what 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 kind of movement that they have to do in order for them to reach the destination. We've said that once the plane landed, they have to pass through an immigration check, okay? So there has to be an organization or there has to be a bureau of immigration that will screen all these tourists and the airport should be organized in such a way that it can help tourists uh, in whatever way they need, like for example, providing the transportation or maybe offering some food and beverages or maybe having set up like souvenir shops. And once the tourist is out of the airport and visit the destination, still the government is um, usually um, supervising the operations. Like for example, if you go to Itawan, you'll see that there's a lot of uh, volunteers or Korean volunteers who are acting as tour guides or as people that you can ask about maybe a place or an activity that you can do. And uh, that's organized by, uh, that's organized in the, uh, by the government. And that is, of course, the operations, the ongoing activity of the business. And as we said, the tourism business has to be maintained and sustained. So when we say maintained, for every product cycle, it goes through different stages. And there will come a time that a product would reach its maturity stage. And once it reaches the maturity stage, the next stage that it will go to is a decline and once that goes to the decline then you have to come up with another product that will off that you can offer to people not only come up with another product 
but also when we're looking at destinations such as uh, the parks, the museums, or maybe mountain, what we need to plan is not only the ongoing day-to-day -day activity, but the big uh, thing that the government, not only the government, but United Nations is advocating is the sustainability of the destination. So of course you're using it now, you're making money out of it, then how long can you do that? Are you sure that that destination can still be around for the next generation? Or, yeah, because usually uh, places or spaces are consumed. And once they are consumed, it, it, it becomes, uh, or it will, it will be gone. And once it will be gone, then there's nothing more to offer to the next generation. And that's why there's a need for researching how to manage it properly, how to sustain it, and also the research is also focused on what other areas can be developed or maybe who else can we invite to see our place. So there's a lot of things that the government is doing in terms of uh, their involvement in this tourism activity. So I hope you learned something from the government's role in this tourism industry and um, I hope it gave you the light to understand why do we need a government why do we pay taxes we pay taxes so that it can it can the, the money that the government can can earn can be revolved or can be used to to support the industry and um, if you have questions regarding the roles of the government in the development of tourism, if you have examples that you learn or that you know, feel free to share it during our online discussion this coming Thursday, this coming uh, uh, week. So with that, I would like to thank you all for listening. And um, please... If you have questions or if you have examples, let's talk about that during our online session. Thank you.